Hello and welcome to the DePaco Virtual Member Seminar. My name is Denise Burmeister of Credit Union Student Choice and I'll be your presenter today. I'm very excited to share with you some information on the option to refinance uh, and what might be right for you. So thank you so much for attending today's session. Uh, we'll get right into the content because I realize everybody's doing this during the lunch hour. Uh, so let's look at some things that you might want to consider as you look at whether or not refinance consolidation is right for you. I wanted to start today by just talking about the impact of the coronavirus pandemic because we are in a very unique situation. Uh, right now there is a pause on most federal student loan payments. Uh, this is until the end of 2020, so through December 31st, uh, most student loans are not requiring payments. Those are all loans that fall into the direct loan category. If you're listening to this webinar and you have some of those older student loans that were originated as part of the Federal Family Education Loan Program, uh, those weren't provided for. Uh, in the CARES Act, which, you know, did include no payments until the end of 2020. Uh, that also applies for any uh, Perkins loans that you may have taken out. But most direct student loans uh, are the ones that are outstanding. So just wanted to make you aware uh, what we know at this point is that unless an extension is made, uh, that payments in January will again be required. We understand that if you were enrolled in automatic payments, that those will pick up just as uh, they were in place before uh, the provisions were put in place that didn't require payments. So what that means, if you had a payment that was normally due on the 16th of the month, come January 16th, your payment will again be due. And if you had enrolled for automatic payments, then those automatic payments will kick back in. So uh, that's what we understand as of today. You know, anything can change between now and December 31st. So you'll want to keep abreast of any potential changes. You're provided here with a website that you can go to. This is the Federal Student Aid site, uh, and it specifically talks about the provisions for the coronavirus pandemic. So you want to save that link and keep checking in to find out if there are changes. But otherwise, be prepared uh, come January to start again making payments on your outstanding federal student loans uh, if those were ones that you weren't required to be making payments on during this time. Really want to look ahead into 21 because that will have a serious impact on your decision about whether refinancing, consolidating federal loans might be right for you. Uh, I've again provided a link for you here to the Federal Student Aid website on managing your loans. You really want to stay informed about potential changes. Uh, we are not quite sure what the new administration might be doing or what the administration might be doing come January. Uh, so things could change between, you know, listening to this information today and then what is available in January. So we would encourage you to really review all of your private student loans uh, because those will uh, potentially be a great area for you to look at refinancing because we do have some historically low rates right now. But because you um, may lose any benefits on your federal student loans if you were to refinance, uh, you want to keep a close eye on those because right now we know what those benefits and provisions are, but that could change come, you know, early 2021. So might be advisable to take a wait and see approach on those because you don't want to lose any benefits that you would have had for your federal student loans by refinancing into a private student loan. If you do decide that you're going to refinance your private student loans, realize it isn't a once and done. So you could do a refinance here at the end of 2020 to take advantage of some really great rates, but realize you still have the option 
to refinance that formerly refinanced loan uh, in the future. And DePaco makes that especially easy because they don't charge any origination fees. There's no cost to do that refinance. So uh, just some advice to keep a close eye on what's happening with federal student loans. Uh, and really, right now might be a great time to look at refinancing just your private student loans because of the rate environment we're in. All right, so let's look at, you know, is this right for you? There are several things that you want to take into consideration. You know, what is your primary objective? Are you looking to reduce your monthly payment? Are you looking to reduce the total amount of interest that you're going to have to repay? You know, what will your budget allow? Oftentimes, refinance is motivated by, you know, making that monthly budget work. Also, a big consideration, especially for a private refinance, is did you graduate? Most lenders are going to require that you graduated uh, with your degree in order to uh, refinance. And then lastly, you really want to be aware of whether or not you're considering going on for additional education. This becomes extremely important because if you've not refinanced, then those loans would potentially be eligible for an in-school deferment. Once you do a refinance loan, if you go back to school, those typically are not eligible for an in-school deferment. So if you think you're going to go on and pursue additional education and you're able to make the payments on your refinance loan, then that's great. But if you do think you would need to have those payments deferred while you're in school, now might not be the time to do that refinance. So all of these things are really important to think about uh, as you evaluate whether refinancing is right for you. Uh, some information on what lenders are looking for. So it's important to know, again, did you graduate? Because that will be an item that most lenders are going to look at for private education refinance. Do you have established credit history? And is that credit history positive? Most lenders are going to look to see that you've been able to manage uh, all of those items that you owe payments on and have been successfully repaying those. Have you been employed? Most lenders are going to look to see that you've been employed for at least two years or more. Uh, in order to approve you, and has your income been steady? So you've been employed for those two years, uh, but was it a salary that's going to help you manage those student loan payments and successfully repay them? So you want to have this criteria in mind when you think about doing uh, a private refinance. If you look at this list and say, oh, some of these look a little scary to me, I don't know that I would necessarily be able to meet, you know, some of this criteria, then that's an opportunity for you as a student who's going to be refinancing to look at getting the help of a creditworthy co-borrower. We know that there are plenty of students who, you know, go through high school, they go on, get their undergraduate degree, and then they're looking to refinance. Well, in that case, you really don't have the opportunity to have that established credit history, employment, you know, the required income. And in those cases, you can absolutely uh, look to use a creditworthy co-borrower to help you qualify for that refinance loan. So don't look at this and say, oh, this might not be for me right now you absolutely have the option to use a creditworthy co-borrower to help you get approved. So realizing what those criteria are. Um, should you consolidate or refinance? We're going to look at the difference between the two. Uh, and then always, you know, keep in mind things could be changing uh, come the start of 2021. So I want to make sure and reiterate that for you. First thing you want to do is really understand where you are. You know, how many loans do you have that you need to repay? What are your current interest rates? You know, what are those total balances that you're looking to pay off? So a good overview of what you have right now and how much you owe. And then what's going to be your goal for those? Are you looking to really lower your payment, um, maybe reduce your interest rate? Uh, a lot of times with Private loans, uh, borrowers
borrowers are looking to remove their co-borrower. So maybe you are that person that got the loans with the help of a parent, uh, and then that parent is like, okay, great, you've been out on your own, you're making your own income, this is a great opportunity for you to refinance and take those loans into your name. So, uh, and then, you know, obviously everybody wants to accelerate how quickly they pay off the debt uh, and what are some ways to do that. So big considerations, federal loan benefits, because we are, you know, a bit of a question mark in our minds right now about what those might be come 2021, you'll want to monitor those federal student aid sites that I provided for you uh, to make sure that you're aware of what those are. And you definitely don't want to lose out on any of those benefits uh, by refinancing uh, too early. And then knowing, you know, of course, what those lender requirements are for you uh, as you think about consolidating and refinancing. So let's dig in into, you know, how do I find out exactly what I have in student loans? That was the first thing we said we were going to do is sort of understand what is owed, you know, who do I owe those loans to, what are my current interest rates. Uh, so that information is available to you for your federal student loans on the National Student Loan Data System. So you can go to this web address, uh, you can use this site to look at you know, each and every federal loan that you have uh, that you still have money to pay back. So this is a great resource to help you, you know, get that full overview of who you owe, how much you owe, what you're paying in interest, so that you can fully understand what you owe in federal student loans. It's also important to know what you owe in private student loans. So not all lenders that do private education loans report to NSLDS. Uh, most, though, are reporting to the credit bureaus. So you can also utilize annualcreditreport.com to get your free credit report to see what educational debt you may have uh, on the private side. It, it may seem confusing. I talk with a lot of students that don't distinguish between what was a federal loan or what was a private loan. You know, in their mind, it's just a student loan. So this will help you differentiate. Your federal loans are going to be showing up on NSLDS. Uh, some private loans won't show there because not all lenders report, but you will find private student loans on your credit reports. And you can get those free credit reports at this web address listed for you here. Uh, also, if you still have a question in your mind or maybe your college that you attended had their own loan program, you can always reach out to the financial aid office at the university that you attended and they can assist as well because you do want to have all of that information about your current student loans at your fingertips while you make decisions about what might be best for you. So two great resources to fully understand what loans you have out there, uh, how much you owe, and sort of what the parameters are for those loans. Uh, what types of loans might you see out on NSLDS? Those are listed for you here. Uh, the old Stafford loans, those stopped being originated in, you know, 2010. The direct loans, those are the primary, those are primarily all of the student loans being done right now. Uh, there could be that you have a direct plus loan if you're a parent that's listening in to the virtual member seminar. Uh, there are Perkins loans out there. Again, Perkins loans are not being offered right now. Uh, but if you've graduated a few years ago, you definitely could have some of those. Uh, and you could have already done a direct loan consolidation. So you want to make sure for each of these types of federal student loans, you understand what your repayment options are and if there are any forgiveness programs, you know, ways to get that debt canceled. Uh, so that you don't have to fully repay everything in the federal student loan program. So I've listed for you here the federal student aid site that you can go to and see the plethora of repayment plans available, you know, what the conditions are for those plans. It also provides 
to information on forgiveness programs that you might be eligible to receive. So you definitely want to go out to this website uh, and see what exists today, you know, as of November 2020, and then you'll want to monitor that uh, as we get into 2021 in case there are changes to those programs and what is available. So definitely uh, check out that URL. Uh, here are the federal student loan benefits uh, as we know them today. Depending on the type of loan that you got, uh, it was a six to nine month grace period after you graduated. If you are you know, thinking about doing a consolidation or refinance, you definitely have to be in the grace or the repayment. Uh, if you had an interest subsidy on those federal student loans, that subsidy will continue throughout the six or nine month grace period. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, you do have loan cancellation for death or disability of the student. That's one of the benefits of your federal student loans. Uh, again, those forgiveness programs and the multiple repayment options that I just mentioned, you want to keep those in mind. Uh, and then there is a consolidation option. There also, for the federal student loans, is a default rehabilitation. So if you found yourself in you know, dire circumstances, you weren't able to make your student loan payments, there are ways to, after a certain number of payments, have those loans rehabilitated and show as you know, in good standing. So lots of um, benefits available to you for your federal programs. Private student loans, you know, a different type of student loan. These would have been given to you by either a, a bank, a credit union, some other type of financial institution. Uh, it could be a fixed rate or variable rate. So with your federal programs, those are all fixed rate. With private student loans, you might have a variable rate. So you want to be sure and determine not only what your interest rate is, but what rate you're at. Right now, interest rates are very low. So if you have a variable rate, you could be enjoying a low interest rate right now. Uh, these were a little different in that they did require underwriting. And in a vast majority of cases, we know that students uh, who went right to college had a co-borrower that helped them get qualified. And in most cases, just like the federal loans, those loans could have been deferred uh, while the student was in school and for a certain amount of time after they graduated. So important to know, uh, you know, the difference between the federal and the private because, you know, right now could be a very opportune time to refinance your private loans uh, and you may want to hold off on the federal loans to see, you know, what happens in early 2021. All right, so let's talk about the difference between consolidation and refinance. In you know, layman's terms, these are used interchangeably, uh, but there are two different types of loans. So we're gonna elaborate a little on what is consolidation, what is refinance. So the consolidation is actually a federal program and it takes multiple federal student loans, all of those different types of student loans that we looked at, excluding the Parent Plus, uh, and those can be merged into one new federal loan. How your interest rate is determined for that is dependent upon what you're paying on those existing student loans. So they're gonna take the interest rate for all of those individual loans that you're consolidating and they're going to use a weighted average. So the more you owe, the more influence that interest rate has. So maybe your freshman year, you had a loan at 5%. Um, it's a smaller amount. Your senior year, you had a, a loan that was twice that amount, and that one's at 7%. That means the, that larger amount is going to have more influence over your new interest rate because it is a weighted average. Uh, once they have that weighted average, it then gets rounded up to the next one-eighth of one percent. So uh, a lot of times with consolidation, it isn't necessarily that you're going to get a lower rate unless you know you have a lot of uh, dollars in a lower interest rate. 
Uh, but it is very convenient for getting it into one payment that you're going to be repaying. Refinance is very similar to consolidation in that it does combine multiple loans into one new loan. Uh, and the perk here is oftentimes a lower interest rate uh, or going beyond, uh, you know, a standard repayment, which is 10 years for all of the federal student loans, uh, unless you do one of the repayment options that, that they have available. So uh, consolidation done through the federal program using a weighted average interest rate rounded up to uh, the next eighth of a percentage point refinance, similar, but it takes multiple loans, uh, combines them into one new loan. Interest rate, very often determined by, you know, member selection, you know, what works for you, uh, and the credit quality, you know, how strong are you as an applicant in terms of uh, FICO score in determining your interest rate. All right, so let's look at uh, some things you should consider for consolidation. Uh, again, interest rate is a weighted average. When you do consolidation, you can expand to, you know, a 10 or 30 year repayment. Can be based on your income. Does allow for public service and teacher forgiveness. You've got that death and disability uh, benefit as well as potentially being able to deduct some of the interest on your taxes. So uh, this is through the Department of Education and is only available for federal student loans. This is how it exists today. You know, keep an eye on what it might look like in 2021. For refinance, this is an opportune time to look at, you know, my private student loans and should I refinance. Uh, this one allows for an interest rate of your choosing. So you could pick whether you want to do a fixed rate or you want to do a variable rate. Your repayment term, again, could be as you know, short as five years, going all the way up to you know, a longer period of time to help with your monthly payment amount. Uh, maximum amounts will vary by lender. Uh, so depending on who you're gonna refinance with, they'll have their own maximum. Uh, this typically will let you do not only private student loans in the refinance, but you can pull in federal loans plus loans, so this is that situation where the student might want to take on their parents' debt. Again, caution, you know, I would wait and see what the benefits for the federal student loans are gonna be in early 2021 before making a decision there. Um, and again, just like uh, the federal programs, you can enjoy, uh, most times you may qualify for a tax deduction based on uh, the refinance loan. All right, so here are some real life examples. This will help you understand, uh, you know, is this the right decision for me? So you can see here that uh, this particular borrower had $23,000 in change in a federal student loan with an interest rate of 4.19%. Remember for the federal student loans, their fixed rate and standard repayment is a 10 year term. Um, this borrower uh, wanted to, you know, look at how do I lower my interest rate, you know, how do I pay this off sooner so that I pay less over the life of the loan. So uh, in this situation, they were in that standard 10-year repayment they'd been paying for a year, which is not uncommon. You don't have to uh, refinance or consolidate right away. You have, you know, until those loans are paid off, you can still do uh, student refinance. So their monthly payment was $261. And if they had stayed in that, you know, traditional repayment term, they would have paid $4,737. They decided they wanted to look at a private refinance to shorten up their repayment period. So they wanted to get this over with. So instead of still having nine years left, they opted to do a five-year refinance with a 4% fixed rate. That definitely increased their payment amount because they're gonna pay it off sooner. Uh, they're gonna have a total interest now of $2,461. So they had the monthly budget to allow them to do a private refinance for a shorter term, uh, and they got a little bit of a break uh, on their interest rate. 
So that means they saved $2,276. And, you know, they shaved off four years of the repayment term. So just an example. And these are things you want to think about, you know, when you're considering should I refinance. Uh, here's a, another situation. They had almost, uh, you know, $95,000 in federal student loans. Uh, and those were at 6.8 to 7.9. Uh, they wanted, you know, to look at, you know, how long do I have to pay this off? They were in, of course, that standard 10-year repayment. They had eight years left. Um, but they wanted to lower their interest rate, pay it off sooner, and, you know, take on some of those plus loans that their parents had taken out. So in this case, they had a monthly payment of $1,300 and a little more. Uh, their total interest was just under $31,000. So because they could afford it, their monthly budget would allow it, you know, they refinanced for five years, so they're really shaving off three years uh, and reducing their interest rate. Um, that, you know, provides for a larger monthly payment. Now they're paying $1,723, uh, but their total interest was greatly reduced. So uh, something to you know, show you the power of paying things off sooner and reducing your interest rate. If you're looking to save money, those are two great ways, you know, paying it off faster and reducing your interest rate. Uh, so here's an example of a, a borrower that decided, you know, let me do what's best for me in terms of lowering my monthly payment, lowering my interest rate. Uh, so they're doing, you know, a private refinance and then doing a federal consolidation, which is most likely what you who are listening will want to do because you're going to want to keep an eye on what the feds are doing into 2021. So might not be uh, the most opportune time to do anything with your federal loans. You might want to wait and see what sort of uh, forgiveness programs come out uh, or other repayment programs come out. But it's a really great time to look at refinancing private student loans because we do have some super rates available right now. So in this situation, you know, they had uh, their federal loans on this standard 10-year repayment. They were paying $344 a month. Had they stuck with that, they would have paid a little over $8,800. But because they need to lower their payment, they opted to do the federal consolidation loan to reduce their payment amount down to 213. And they did that by extending the repayment period to 20 years. Uh, so you can see that significantly increased how much interest they have to pay because they're extending it from 10 years to 20. So they went from a little over 8,000 to over 18,000 in total interest, but they needed to do that to get the lower payment. On their private loans, they did a separate private refinance. They before had an 18 year term. They were paying 342 a month for total interest of over 38,000. But you can see up here, their interest rate was eight and a quarter to 10 and a half which was not uncommon even a few years ago. So if you have private student loans, chances are they're probably at some you know, higher interest rates. So they opted to refinance just their private loans uh, into a 15-year term. They reduced their interest rate down to seven and a quarter percent, which dropped their monthly payment by $30, which they you know, knew that was a key factor in their decision-making process. Uh, and then their total interest dropped to 20917 because they have that lower interest rate. So, you know, even though it was a little more complicated, they did the private refinance separate from doing anything from their federal student loans, they were able to lower their payment by $161 and save themselves $7,800 in interest. So this could very well be a scenario that you're looking at you know, refinance those private loans now, you know, watch and see what happens with the feds because we really just don't know uh, what that's going to look like until, you know, start of 2021. So uh, definitely advantageous to look at, you know, all options in what you want to do. You've got a wonderful resource available to you through DePaco. 
I've listed a URL here. You can go to their site to get more information. If you wanted to call and talk to a refinance representative as you're filling out your application, uh, you can reach us at this number right here on your screen. In addition to that, uh, you'll find on that site all of the interest rates that DePaco is making available to you. So right now, you can do a private student loan refinance with a 15-year term starting as low as 3%. So, you know, definitely advantageous if you're sitting out there with some private loans at much higher rates, which we know there are lots of people in that boat. If you wanted to shorten up that term, which you know is advantageous in reducing the amount of interest you're gonna pay overall, they have a five-year fixed available starting at just four and a half. Uh, and then if you wanted to go you know, standard 10-year, you can be anywhere from five and a quarter up. So really advantageous interest rates that DePaco is making available to you right now uh, for their refinance. You can find more information. You know, we've really hit the tip of the iceberg during our time together today, but you can find more information, great resources available on the DePaco site. They have some uh, great money clips that you can go out and watch as well. So those are, you know, quick and easy to do when you have a few extra minutes and want to get some more information. And then they've also made available to you through uh, the DePaco Student Choice Partnership, our College Access and Repayment Counselor. So, you know, while I've given you some very high-level information today, you may want to have a one-on-one -on -one phone meeting with our repayment counselor and talk about the specifics of your situation, and you can do that at no charge. DePaco is covering this for you, so you don't have to pay anything. Uh, you'll simply go to the web address listed here, click and find a time that's convenient for you, schedule that 30-minute one-on-one phone meeting. You can talk about your specifics, you know, way what might be best in your situation. Uh, or, you know, maybe you just need help going to NSLDS, or maybe you need help going out to get your credit report to understand what you have. It doesn't necessarily have to be about doing the refinance. It could be, you know, researching or finding information about your student loans. So please do utilize this resource. It's no cost to you. DePaco is making it available uh, courtesy uh, of their program. So uh, thank you so much. I appreciate your time and attention. If you have any questions after this, you don't necessarily need a 30-minute one-on-one phone meeting, but you have a quick question, feel free to send those to us at the web address listed here. Or I will stay on the line if you want to submit a question via the chat or the Q&A, uh, please do so. I, I will be on the line and happily you know, answer those questions for you. I, Thank you so much for your time and attention. I hope that you have much success in repaying your student loans and that this was helpful in understanding ways to reduce how much you're going to have to pay in interest uh, by either, you know, finding better interest rates or reducing the term, you know, how long you're paying those student loans back. All right, I see a couple of questions 